Welcome to Rise Above the Ranks. We are back, baby, with a brand new episode. We did take a little break because we've been working on something very special that we cannot wait to share with all of you. It will be coming out in the next couple of months. More information to follow. We've also been selling real estate. We've been doing that too, here and there. Just saying. So this podcast, as everybody knows, is in conjunction with our free real estate newsletter, The Blueprint. Subscribe at www.readtheblueprint.com to stay up to date on the most important news in real estate. Each week, we're going to go over one topic that we think can help elevate your game. On today's episode, since we're halfway through the year, we thought we'd share a quick market update, what we've learned, where we are, and where we think the rest of the year is heading. There's so much going on in the market, obviously with inflation and interest rates and inventory. So we figured halfway through the year, let's get right into it. (laughs) What's your take? Wow. Halfway through the year already. It's nuts. January, February, March, April, May. Shit, we really are. Um, It's been crazy. I mean, look, we went into this year a little bit apprehensive. We were like, we may or may not have a great year. Mm -hmm. We kind of accepted it, right? And, And it worked out. It did. We hit the ground running. We hit the ground running. I think we hit the ground running because there was no inventory. Rates were rising, but people were still racing to buy real estate. Right. And then they were trying to curb inflation and rates just kept going up and up and up. Mm -hmm. And as they went up, the market did soften and soften and soften. And it was at that point where we were like, oh, shit, what's going to happen next? Well, I was speaking with Danny Gibsman yesterday, the um, the mortgage broker we use. Yes. We we use him for our purchases. We recommend him to clients. He's really good. Uh, That's a shameful plug right there for Danny Gibson. (laughs) uh, Inadvertently. But he said that what's interesting is it's really picking up now. Because he goes, while rates are actually climbing, people tend to get freaked out. Yep. And they tend to like sit on their hands and wait. Uncertainty, right. Right. But when 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 they start to, they've gone up. Yep. We all know that. But historically, they're still pretty good. When they start to level off, which they have, right, mm-hmm. the activity starts again. Yeah, because people have some certainty, right? Mm-hmm. I think you're spot on. Like... These rates moving up, it wasn't a secret. It was like, inflation's out of control. We have to curb it. How do we do that? We raise interest rates. And now, you know, they're kind of saying we might see one more rate hike in the next 30 days, but that's it. Inevitably, they'll come down after that anyway. And even if interest rates go up, borrowing rates can still come down, right? Correct. Absolutely right. So, So I think, listen, the reality is what we've already seen the beginning of the year, like you said, could have been shaky. Obviously, we do work in the super high end, right? So we did hit the ground running and we had a number of good transactions because there is a housing shortage. Yes. People say, oh, my God, there, there's a lack of buyers. There's not a lack of buyers. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you why. Two transactions, one of which we did recently, really caught my eye and, and, and showed just how many buyers there are out there. There was one in West Hollywood. Different areas. I'm going to to give one example in Beverly Hills and one in West Hollywood. One in West Hollywood on Laurel Avenue, 600 Uh block. 3,100 square foot house, 6,500 square foot lot. That's a pretty standard size for that location, Uh right? House was nice. It wasn't particularly anything special, right? And they priced it $2,950,000. How much do you think it's sold for over asking price? You just don't know in this market because sometimes it goes stale and nothing happens and others it sells 500, 600, a million over. You just don't know. $650,000 over. And why do you think that is? Because there's a lot of buyers out there. Like if something's well priced and it's, listen, that's a good block. It's a 600 block. It's by Fred Siegel. It's a wide, quiet street, but it's not like West Hollywood Prime. It's a little bit like bordering on Crescent Heights when you go kind of east, right? Mm -hmm. There's just a lack of inventory. This is what we come down to. Listen, there's a lot of crap on the market that people can't move into that isn't turnkey, that might be on a corner, a busy intersection. Do you know what I mean? That's not that desirable. But when something good comes up that's moving ready, that doesn't really have many drawbacks, I mean, the market speaks for itself. But what that means is it shows two things. It shows that there's activity in the market. And to get 650000 over... I don't believe there were just two buyers on that deal. Probably. There must have been at least 10. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? It means there's at least 10 buyers behind the buyer that won the bid. So whoever says there's no buyers in this market right now have been proven wrong. Totally. The second example we actually did recently ourselves in Beverly Hills, right? It was priced at 8495 
There were 18 offers on Crazy. that property. Eight and a half million dollar teardown. 18 buy no, not 18, not 18 people that came through the door. There were about 50. 18 buyers who submitted offers. Crazy. For eight and a half million bucks. It's crazy. So it went, we won it. But we had to beat out 17 other people. And it and obviously, we have the escrow. I can't disclose it yet, but for way over. So what does that mean? There's 17 other buyers that are willing and able to spend $8.5 million on a teardown. I love it. I think the buyers are there. We can agree with that. Yeah. I think the sentiment and problem in the market isn't that the buyers are there. It's that if I'm a seller, why am I going to sell today? Right? I got a 2.5% interest rate. I'm locked in for another seven years. I can maybe make 20, 30% profit on my house. But what am I going to go and buy when the interest rate is now 6% to go mm. and buy the new house? I That's agree. the problem. Unless you have to move and Correct. you have another kid and you haven't got enough space. And it's like, okay, like we go back to that saying, like the, the other mortgage broker says, you're not you know, married to your loan, you're just dating it, right? Correct. Okay, so you could take, you could sell well. You could probably get a good price for your property. This is what I would say if I was just on their side and their situation was as such. Get a good price for your house, mm -hmm. buy something bigger, yep. yet in the interim you'll be paying 6% versus your 2% or 3% or 4%, whatever, whatever you locked is. in at. And in the future, when, not if, when interest rates go down, whenever it is, right, you'll be able to refinance it and bring your payment down. So you're just really kind of factoring in the 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 delta of your interest payment for that period of time. Yep. Now, what does that mean? Let's just say you didn't do it and you held on to that property and you did have another kid and you squashed in your house and you decided not to sell. Interest rates go down, right? The market blows up even more than it already is right now. And you can't really find the house of your dreams because you've got 30, not 10, not 20, 30, 40 people bidding against you, right? So the argument is this market's a great opportunity to buy the house that you really love, that really works for your family. Because in a market where there are 30 or 40 people bidding against you when rates are really artificially low, you're probably not going to get that property. You'll probably have to have, you'll concede on the property you're buying. So it's give and take, whether you're a buyer or a seller, whether you're selling yeah. now and buying something new at a higher rate, you can refinance in 18 months, or you're a buyer right now and you want to wait. Everything kind of evens out no matter which way you look at it. Pretty much. But if we read the news and we're talking about a market update, there's lots that's being spoken about. Sellers offering concessions, buyers stepping back, home builders are offering incentives. Like we're painting this glorious photo of the market right now. That's what we do. But it's not. That's I get it. not what it is. It's not COVID. We're not in 2% rates right now. We do have an inventory problem. And I think it's important that... Whilst we know how to make the glass half full, not half empty, we also need to talk about the problems, how to overcome them, and where we see the market going. Hold on one second, everybody. I got to go over one offer that I don't think you're going to want to miss because... You deserve to work with the very best of the best. And when it comes to real estate CRMs, the best of the best is Boomtown. Bottom line, with flexible packages that fit your unique business and all of the tools and tech for next level growth, Boomtown is built for winners. To claim $750 in free digital marketing credit, visit boomtownroi.com slash blueprint and use the promo code Blueprint. Again, that's boomtownroi.com slash blueprint. Listen, we know that things aren't as they were before. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows that. The stock market's down, interest rates are up. But how it was before was artificial. Like rates were too low, historically low for a long period of time. And inflation got out of control. So right now, I actually think we've, we've spoke about a normalization of the market. But now this is just reality. It, there's cycles. It goes up, it goes down. And right now, we're probably in a normal situation. But just relative to what it was before, it seems not normal. Correct. Because everything was overinflated before. Agreed. I think COVID times were not the reality. It became reality because COVID went on for so fucking long. Yeah. But now we're through COVID. I think this is more reality than what that was. But I do think to anyone that's in the real estate industry out there, no matter which state you're in, no matter what price point you're in, I think this goes for everybody. We as agents have to be very smart right now because in COVID, if you had a $2 million property, 
it could maybe fetch $3 million because there were 50 buyers bidding on the same house because the rates were so low. But today, I think as agents, we have to be very smart on how we price properties because overpriced listings are not selling. They're going stale Mm -hmm. and they end up just sitting and not selling. So as agents, I know it's conversations that we always have. Mm -hmm. You have to price right. Mm -hmm. You have to be smart. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember that time is money and Mm -hmm. you have to spend your time wisely if you want to make money instead of just taking on inventory that doesn't sell. Let's talk about that for a moment. Well, it's also like a disservice to your client if you're buying a listing. We, we talk about that term in our industry. You want to buy a listing. It's like give them a stupid number just for them to sign the listing with you. Correct. And then it sits there. It has to get price reduced. Ultimately, the property is accumulated days on market and it devalues the property, right? right? So that is doing a huge disservice by buying listings from clients. Yep. Um, but I think, look, a lot of people think the higher you price, the higher you're going to sell for. There's a difference between a higher listing price and an optimal listing price. The optimal listing price is the price that's going to yield the best result. So it's all about the comps. It's all about the market, right? And I think it's hugely important to look at your client in the eye and be honest with them. Don't like blow smoke up their ass for the sake of getting their listing because literally you're doing them a disservice. For sure. Ultimately, it's not about I want your listing. It's about I want to make sure I sell your property for the best price possible in the shortest time frame. Yep. Therefore, you will probably refer me business and give me all your business in the future yep. and happy days for everyone. Agreed. Okay, so let's move on. In terms of what people are talking about, sellers are offering concessions right now. Is that something you agree with? Something that you think is happening that you're seeing? Yeah. What I think, type of concessions? Well, we're about to put a, a property on the market, right, in the Hollywood Hills. And our client is offering five years of carry at 50%. That basically means if you buy the property for, say, $10 million, right, the seller would carry $5 million at 4% for five years. That's a concession right there. Yep. So it basically means uh, you can own the property, but by the time interest rates go down, you can refi it, right, and never have to lock into an interest rate, hopefully, assuming interest rates go down in the next five years, mm-hmm. of higher than 4%. That's pretty good. I think that's incredible, and sellers have to get creative right now because buyers in the higher tier properties, they're just not going to go to a bank and borrow at 6%. So sellers that can afford to carry paper are offering. What other type of concessions well, well, are Well, the you other seeing? thing is with that is that, that just say that person had the cash to buy the property, right? It, interest rates are so high right now, they can get a really good return by having their cash in the bank. What it means is they even if they were going to buy all cash, they take a portion of it as a down payment, 50% in this case, they the, the seller carries for 4%. They keep their money in the bank and they're probably getting 4.8% in a checking account right, right. now. That's unbelievable. Absolutely. Uh, other concessions, I mean, look, people will you know throw in furniture for free. Um, they might give um, a longer escrow. I mean, they might do a lease with an option to purchase. Yep. People are getting creative. They're thinking outside the box in order to make a deal. Absolutely. And I think it's great. Me too. And we're also seeing on a lot of these sales, and this was something we saw a lot of in COVID, it's still happening now, is where you agree a deal and the seller negotiates a lease back so that they can stay in the property so that they're not forced to move out in 10 days, 20, 30 days. Perhaps they have two months or three months or four months to just sit and find the right property. Because look, a lot of people right now are being forced out of their homes because they're getting an offer that they just can't refuse or can't say no to. Mm -hmm. So offering a lease back in the deal is often useful so that you have that extra time. All right, we could just go on and on and on and keep talking about the market, but let's summarize what we've discussed. Obviously, we feel as though inflation is now curbed and rates have calmed down. The Fed have said maybe one more hike, probably not. And now we'll start to see rates hopefully level off. Inventory we've discussed is a problem. We'll keep monitoring that. Our advice to agents, what would it be? It doesn't matter if the market's up, the market's down, interest rates are up or down. It just stays the same. Stay in your lane, work hard, get creative, think outside the box. But the main thing is just don't give up because Amen. because you have to be in it to win it. Yep. You have to have listings. You have to have buyers or whether the market's great or the market's shit, 
you're not going to have a business. So from from our perspective, we started from nothing. We came from across the pond. We just have a great ethic and, right. and we won't give up and we won't stop. And that's probably my best advice to any agent. That is bloody great advice. And I think the last piece to that is the glass has to remain half full. As agents, you can pick and choose how you want to see things or, or talk about things. If the glass is half full, the mentality is right and you can go out and be successful. Okay, that brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Hope you've learned something from today's segment. We will bring you back much more content in the coming weeks. Thank you for tuning in. Again, this is Rise Above the Ranks, the sister publication to readtheblueprint.com. Click subscribe and we will see you next week. Thank you.